Most people are brought to faith in Christ, not by argument for it, but by exposure to it. Let me just say that again. Most people are brought to faith in Christ, not by argument for it, but by exposure to it. Let me, let me explain that and say this. How many of you became a Christian because you met a Christian and you saw something in their life that you wanted? How many people could say, I met a Christian and there was something in their life? Yeah, yeah, okay. Number one here, number one. The reason I believe in my Christian life that I'm fruitful in leading people to Jesus is because I always operate with a spirit of encouragement. So today I want to impart that to you in some way. And I want to share that. I really felt that's what God wanted. Do you know what? I, I, um, I finished leading churches and now I work working with church plants and stuff. And when I did that, I decided to start something called Barnabas Plus because Barnabas is an encourager in the Bible. And I changed my email to, instead of C.S. McLean, to C.S.B., calling myself Barnabas, which I thought, that's pretty smart. So I, I said to everybody, you always have to remember the B. That's what you have to remember. You can get in touch with me. Oh, yeah, that's great. Until... I signed a legal document one day, CSB, and it was handed back to me and said, that's not you, it is me. And I realized I'd changed my signature as well. Whoops. But the reason I put the B in there is because I want to be a Barnabas to people. I want to encourage people where they are. And uh, so today I'm going to talk about biblical encouragement. If you're writing notes, biblical encouragement. How and what we speak can change the destiny of other people. We can help them to succeed or we can, can condemn them. And so I'm talking about the power of biblical encouragement, not positive thinking, but biblical encouragement. It says in the encyclopedia that encouragement is the action of giving somebody support, confidence, and hope. How many people say, I want to live my life with people giving me support, comf confidence, and hope? How many people here? We all need it. We all need it. That's the great thing about the body of Christ, that we encourage and we build one another up. We're going to look at that today. And we have the power to do that or not do it. Encouragement comes in many forms. My wife and I relocated to a church in England, and uh, we didn't know, well, I knew half the people from when I was the pastor there, but the other half the people I didn't know. So I, welcome, I, went to the, I was on the welcome team, and I was welcoming people, and I'd say, so great to have you here today. Is it your first Sunday? No, I've been here for two years. So I felt like a real idiot. So I thought, well, what am I going to do if I don't know all the people? So you know what I did? I decided on that day, what, if anybody contributed on a Sunday morning in the band or praying or anything, I was going to go to them. I was going to thank them and appreciate them and encourage them. Because at least then I knew who they were, all right? Because I kept offending too many people. <laughs> but if we, can, if we encourage as a community, we can be a great church. And so many of us are not brought up with encouragement. I remember Miss Nias at my school. Miss Nias was pretty strict. And one day I said to Miss Nias, I can't quite do this, uh, S, this uh, math exam here. I can't quite get this bit right. And she said, don't worry, McLean. You're useless. You're never going to amount to anything. And that exam won't mean anything to you anyway. Didn't go home very encouraged that day. But I remember it to this day. I remember Miss Nye saying that. And I think some of those things, they can shape us. They can tear us down. They can condemn us to a life of restriction. So for me, in hearing Miss Nye's words, I thought, I'm never going to amount to anything. And so I took really low paid jobs because I thought, well, no one will really want to employ me. How can just a few words have such an impact on my life? Discouragement. This, I, I read this, discouragement is the dark room where fear and failure are developed. Discouragement. But we all need, we all need, we all need encouragement. What do we need? We all need encouragement. Everyone around us needs encouragement. You know, We have the power in our lives to give encouragement or to hold it back. Do you know what the Bible says? Our God is the God of all encouragement. It said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God 
of all comfort, that is encouragement, who comforts us in all our tribulation, so we'll be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort we've received. Our God is an encouraging God. And, and he wants us to be encouraged so that we can give courage to others. In the big book of Hebrews, if you've got a Bible with you, Hebrews 10, verses 24, 25, and this is going to be the basis of my message. It says this, and let us consider how we may spur one another on to love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. So I want to give you today in the light of that scripture, I want to give you some practical help in being a person who gives encouragement. Do you know what? I encourage lots of people. I spend time, I, I, I go out to breakfast at least three times a week, generally with a leader from a church. And uh, when I meet with them, I am operating in encouragement. But yet sometimes I forget I need encouragement too. And we went to this new church uh, that we were at in England and on about a month in, the secretary from the church wrote me a letter saying, Chris, we just want to say, we are so glad to have you in our church. We're so glad to have Rachel, your wife. We're so glad to have your daughter, Clara, leading our kids' work. We are so glad to have your daughter, Maisie, in the church. You are a real blessing as a family. And it hit me. I thought, man, I often talk about encouragement, but sometimes we all need it in our particular situation that we're in. Do you know what the Bible says? It says a word aptly spoken, in meaning at the right time, a word aptly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. In other words, it's a beautiful thing. And so we need to be speaking encouragement to one another. Do you know one of the reasons I often find in churches that nobody goes to the visitors or nobody goes to the musicians to thank them is because they think somebody else is doing it. Oh, well, did somebody else, somebody else will get that. There'll be somebody else. But you know what? Nobody's doing it. But God wants his church to be full of encouragement, overflowing with encouragement. Number one, we need to pe- be a people who speak hope. Speak hope to others. In situations I find myself, I'm speaking hope. I met with a, uh, I met with a, a family who've got a, you know, a disabled child, quite a young child at the moment, and they were saying, you know, you know we're doing okay, but we're worried what, when this child grows up, who's going to look after it? And they were, they were totally fearful and they were struggling, but I was able to impart hope. Hey, listen, you're part of the family of God. You know, there's going to be others who come alongside me. You know, I to them. we prayed for their other children. Their other children had responsibility as well for them. But they, I needed to impart some hope to them because they were struggling. We need to be a people who speak hope. The, the language that we speak makes all the difference. It says, let us consider how we may spur one another onto love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together by encouraging one another. It's an active thing in bringing encouragement to others. The church needs encouragement. The loss need encouragement to come on Alpha. When we meet people, are we encouraging people forward? We'll read about Barnabas in a moment, I'm gonna look at, and Barnabas, when he was with people, he encouraged people to remain true to the Lord. He encouraged people who were apostolic to continue their journey. He, he was full of encouragement, overflowing. Why? Because he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. If we want to be people full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, we should be a people overflowing with encouragement. Everybody needs it everywhere we go. Let me read you about Joseph. It says here, the first we find of him in the Bible, And he's a perfect example. It says this, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. So that wasn't his real name. It was his nickname. They called him Barnabas, son of encouragement. You know, but they said, you know what, you're you're so encouraging. We're going to call you Barnabas. It's like I heard of a guy, an American guy, I think it was. And and uh, somebody went up to him and said, hey, what's your name? And he said, Tex. He said, well, where in Texas do you come from? He said, I don't come from Texas. I come from Louisiana. Louisiana. You come from Louisiana and they call you Tex. Why is that? He said, because I don't want to be called Louise. 
It was a nickname. So I'm trying to say, get across it. Is, what was his name? Hey, whenever he came around, they said, look, there's Barnabas, the son of encouragement. And everywhere Barnabas goes, he encourages people. He sold a field, it says, he owned, and bought the money and put it at the apostles' feet because they knew that would be helpful for the work. It's amazing sometimes how you can give money to somebody and they are encouraged. Sometimes I get it wrong, like Rachel and I have had times in our lives where we, I said, you know what, I really feel we ought to send that family some money. And she said, oh, well, yeah, okay. So we put some money in an envelope and we put it through their door. We don't go and tell them, hey, we're giving you this money because they'll, they'll probably, oh, no, 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 no. We have to go through that. But look at Barnabas. He puts it at the apostles' feet. In other words, God, I believe they can do with it what they want to do with it. It's like when we give our money in church. We don't say to Andrew, well, Andrew, we're giving this money to the church, but you have to use it for this. No, what we do is we lay it at the feet. We lay it at, at those who God's given to us. And they, and they gave it away. Now, Rachel and I, we put that envelope through a family's door. And then I went to home group about two weeks later. And somebody said, hey, you never guess what? Someone put some money through my door. And they said, that's funny. That's funny. He said, uh, somebody put some money through my door. And he said, no, no, no. I put that money through your door because I didn't need it. I know you did. And she said, well, I didn't need it, so I passed it to somebody else. And then somebody else in the group said, oh, was it you who put the money through my door then? <laughs> and I sat there, and they didn't have a clue where it came from. But four people had received that money before it landed with the people who really needed it. It was really fun. Listen, we can put our stuff into the hands of God, and he knows where it's got to go. Okay, I got it wrong. They didn't need any money, but somebody four people down did. And that's encouraging. It's a good way of, of encouraging people, you know, and consider at times, it doesn't have to be a lot of money. Just consider at times, if you hear a need and you think, could I meet that need? Could I bless that so that God provides? It happened to me in my life. I went to go for an interview once. And when I went to go for an interview, I, I, I had, my shoes were in the menders and I didn't have the money to get them out. And when I got downstairs, somebody from the church had sent me some money. And it was enough money because I looked really silly. I had a suit and a tie and everything. And I had these running shoes on. I just, I looked like, I don't know. I looked like a, I looked like, I looked like a burglar. The rest. <laughs> but um, it, it, money can give encouragement. And so and what we're going to see about Barnabas is that he sticks with people when other people don't stick with them. He goes through from, he encourage, brings encouragement to the apostles. Now, you know what? Barnabas is often mentioned in the Bible, in all sorts of places, and yet never wrote anything that's in the Bible. He never did. And yet the actions of encouragement that he brought, if he hadn't have brought them, we wouldn't have anything from the Apostle Paul in the Bible, and we wouldn't have um, Mark's gospel either. Because both of those people, Barnabas had a massive impact in their life when they were struggling to get noticed or helped or, uh, and he stood alongside them. So Barnabas is a sort of second, second string sort of player. He's not in the front line always the time. And he's, and he's got a good heart. It says this in um, Acts 11, it says, now those who've been scattered by the persecution that broke out because Stephen had been killed, traveled to Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch, spreading the word only among the Jews. Some of them, however, went, men from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them and a great number of people, a great number of people, a great number of people believed in the Lord. Now, news of this reached the church in Jerusalem and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. And when he arrived there and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and he encouraged them. That's what Barnabas does everywhere he goes. He encouraged them to remain true to the Lord with all their heart, for he was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And a great number of people were brought to the Lord. A great number of people were brought to the Lord. There's a problem. They send Barnabas. He sees an opportunity for encouragement. Why? Why are we going to send Barnabas? Because he's full of encouragement. That's why they sent him. I found the people I admire most are godly people. Godly, godly people are always encouraging. They're not tearing people down. They're not giving up on people. 
they're full of faith and the Holy Spirit like Barnabas. People that follow Jesus that I am following always encourage it. I'm glad to have them in my life. Barnabas, full of faith, we read here, and the Holy Spirit. Barnabas was good to be with. People that are good to be with lead people to Jesus. Churches that are good to be with lead people to Jesus. I love this church. This church has a very special place in my heart. And I, I think I probably say this every time I come. Why? Because it's a church that is full of encouragement. I have watched people come from the nations of the world over the years, this church. What, what is it? 15? Is it 15? Here's next week. 15 years, all right? This is not representative of the 15 years, let me tell you. I have met people from the nations of the world who have come here. They may have been struggling. They may have been fearful to be sent back to their own country because of persecution. They may have been struggling to find a job. And they came to this church and they found the encouragement of God. They found people who will lift them up. They found people who will pray for them to find a job. They find people who will serve their children, teaching them about Jesus. This is an encouraging church to belong to. I should at least get an amen for that. Better come back to that one, all right? Okay. This is an encouraging church to belong to. I, I nearly, nearly, we nearly got there, all right? I'll try again, right? This is a very encouraging church to come to. Amen. Listen, that's what you are. That's what you are. I've seen people come and they've not been able to live in Toronto. They couldn't afford a house. So they've moved out. But God has always supplied new people to be the encouragers. That's what God is doing here. He's building his people together who know Jesus, who love Jesus, who walk in his presence, know they're forgiven and cleansed and made you. And what do they do? They encourage those that God sends among them. And they encourage those that God puts in their, in their place. Many are led to the Lord because such a people convey the love of God through their lives. It's not always, people don't always come to Christ just through the preaching. They come through the lives that we live, the love that we show, the care that we take, the fellowship that we have. And they become part of a family, God's family. It's what God wants us to be part of. God wants us to be a people full of encouragement, full of encouragement. I went to a conference in England. This is when I was living in Canada. Went there, didn't know anybody at the conference except one person called Norman Blows. And I met him, said hello, and that was the end of my friendship for the time. I didn't know anybody else. And I sat down and the guy came up to me and um, this guy said to me, um, do you remember speaking in Canterbury lots of years ago? And I said, oh yeah, I remember praying for people and prophesying and speaking. And he said, you said to me, if I commit my life under the leaders and grow in my faith, I will be the first person to plant a church out of that church. And I said, oh, he said, I just want to tell you, we were the first couple to plant a church out of that church to a place called Recolver. There was a church there now, and it was because of that day. And I went, oh, thank you for the encouragement. You don't always hear stuff coming back. So I said, thanks for sharing. I went to put it on my phone so I could tell my wife about it. And what happened? Another guy came up to me and he said, do you remember coming to Canterbury once to speak? And I said, yeah, I do. And he said to me, look, you know what? If I really commit my ways to the Lord and grow in faith and in the Holy Spirit and learn to minister to people and learn to speak uh, and out what God has given to me, I am going to be a person leading that church in the future. And I said, oh, right, did I pray that? Okay. And he said, I now lead that church. And I went, really? He said, yeah. I said, oh, thanks for sharing that. That's really good. So I wrote it down on my phone and I went to get a coffee. And as I went to get a coffee, a guy said to me, are you Chris McLean? I said, yeah. He said, do you remember coming to Canterbury once? So I said to him, do you know what? I'm beginning to remember that day. And he said, well, you prophesied over me that I had the ends of the earth in my heart. And one day God was going to, as I, as I added to that and grew in my faith, God was going to plant me out. And he said, I want you to know on that day, God started something and I've just planted a church in Finland. And I said, thank you so much. Do you know, the rest of the day, I was looking out for people like, is there anybody else coming? But what an encouragement. And, and what was it? What did I do? I prayed for them. I encouraged them. I prayed for them. I spoke what I felt God had from me to them. Their lives were changed. 
think that's, I think that's how God wants us to operate in our evangelism. When you think of evangelism, often when I go to churches, people, I say evangelism, the first word comes to people's minds, run. Okay? And so what I've done is I put the alpha course in churches because it's fun to meet together and it's fun to learn from, about God and have our questions answered. And now when I go to those churches and I say the word evangelism, they think fun, not run. Because they found a tool to help others come to Christ. You can sit around the table and people can ask crazy questions. And, uh, you know, you, 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 to be honest with you, you don't always answer them because the material itself gives the answers. It's the gospel. Encouragement is crucial. I encouraged these people that I met who were in cancer very clearly. I spoke hope. I got them underway in their hearts. And Jesus said this, the words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. That's John 6, 63. The words I've spoken to you are full of spirit and life. Listen, in Jesus' day, there were the Pharisees. They weren't speaking spirit and life. They were feeling superior, always full of judgment, always criticizing people, always bringing people down. As a matter of fact, Jesus called them whitewashed tombs. Okay? I've never heard anybody else call that, but that's what Jesus, he said, you, you, you look all nicely painted up, but on the inside, you're dead. Because they were carnal, they were bringing death and condemnation and tearing people down. Do you know what my Bible says? It says, there is some condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Is that what it says? Is that what it says? No, it doesn't. What does it say? It says, there's no condemnation for those in Christ. Which one encourages you the most? All right? Listen, there is no condemnation. So we want to lift people up. But we were hearing, a gr that was a great testimony this morning. It was a very honest, open testimony being shared. about what, But actually, what was it? It was God coming to lift her up. Bringing them to, into a new understanding of, of what he is like. The, I don't want to be a Pharisee, do you? I don't want to be a Pharisee, although sometimes I do find a little bit of Pharisee pop out in me. I've got to tell you, it does. It's like when someone comes to me at church and they say, have you got any money? We really need some money this week. And the Pharisee in me says this, they smoke. They smoke. They spend their money on cigarettes. Do we really want to give them money? Oh, no, no, no. That's not how I think now. I think, no, I'm going to love them in Jesus. I'm going to help them. And then we're going to get their budgeting sorted out so that they can stand on their own. My first point of call is what? Encouragement. Let's encourage people. And all the more, it says in the scripture in Hebrews, as we see the day approach it. If you look in your Bible, the, the word day in that scripture is capital D. Why is it capital D? Because it means the day they meet Jesus. Encourage one another all the more because there's going to be a day coming when they will encounter Jesus. And so that's why we need to be a community of encouragement and strength and blessing and prayer and help because that is what this church is and that's what its foundation is from the beginning, to be honest with you. What we see this in this passage is not just speaking hope, but speaking action. There's action in there. You need, it, it says you need to do something. We need a faith that makes us do something, reach out to someone, do something. I was in a restaurant just before we came back from England and I went out for dinner because my wife had gone out with friends and stuff. So I went and I sat down and I was having a meal and uh, I suddenly thought, well, you know, I'd, I'd like a cup of coffee. So I'll go back to the person and see if I can get a coffee. I got up and I went past this table and there was a family sitting there. And this family, there was a husband and a wife and two children. And I stopped and I said to them, can I just say to you, you're doing a great job with your kids. It's so, so nice. I'm sitting over here. You're, honestly, you're doing a great job with your kids. These kids just commend you. I said, honestly, well done. I'm just so amazed by it. I said, the reason I'm saying I've got six kids and I know what it's like to go to a restaurant. Okay. The lady looked at me and a tear came out of her eye. And the husband looked at me and went, oh, thanks. So when I got my coffee and when I came back, when I sat down, the husband was sat at my table and he said to me, why would you say such a thing? Why, why, would, you, why would you say such a thing? Why, why did you say that? I said, because I, th I thought you're doing really good, my word, and to encourage you. 
And I said, and I've got six kids, so I know it's, it's really hard work, but you're doing it. You're coloring in with them, you're chatting to them. I was just really blessed by that. And he said to me, yeah, but, but what's your motivation? I said, listen, I didn't have a dad growing up. And I value the fact that my wife and I, you know, I take our kids out. We, could, we, we do a good thing. And I, I value dads and mums working together in that. So I just wanted to say. Anyway, he sat at my table for about 10 minutes. I've mean, just been able to share how I became a Christian, though I didn't have a dad. And God helped me in my life. And I just wanted to commend it. Listen, were they more open to the gospel after I encouraged them or before? What do you think? After I encouraged them, I encouraged them. And then the guy's sitting at the table. I come back with my coffee. I thought someone had stolen my table, first of all. And I put it down and I was like, oh, I started to chat. Our passage encouraged us to, to consider how we may stir one another up to love and good works. It takes some considering. What am I going to do? Who am I going to reach? So when I, when I meet non-Christians, my, my habit of life is this, especially if it's a church, I say to them, look, we're never going to get much of a conversation now. How would you like to come out for breakfast with me this week? Oh, yeah, I'd love to. And I get breakfast with them and I get to meet with them and I get to share my life with them and I get to share my faith with them. And uh, I, I took one person out fairly recently for breakfast before I left England and we went to a, a, a place called a Beef Eater Steakhouse for having breakfast. And, uh, and I thought, I looked at the lady who was serving us and she had a, a knee brace on. And so I looked at her and said, well, are you working long hours today? She said, yeah. I said, do you mind if I pray for your knee? And the person who was sitting there having breakfast with me, their eyes widened. Like, what? She said, oh, that'd be really nice if you could do that. So I, I prayed for her, her knee. And, and uh, she came back a bit later. She said, do you know, it's really easy today. And I said, do you know what? I'm going to come back and have breakfast here again and see how you're doing. Oh, yeah, I'd love that. And she was totally receptive to it. But once again, once that happened, the conversation, what direction did it go? It went in the direction, well, what, tell me about your faith. We've got to be living. You know, maybe I need to do something. Being spirit, being spirit filled means we sometimes need to learn to the, the promptings of God. Okay. Let me, let me give you some easy ones. There's an easy one that you can do in your life. If someone really cares for you and blesses you, write them a card. Don't send them an email. Emails people look at and they're gone. But if you give someone a really nice card and they'll put it on their shelf and they'll keep reading it and reading it again. And you can write something in there about what they've done in your life and how much you appreciate them. And it builds them up. Emails don't do that. Once you've heard it, bzz, in the trash. It's not the same. People, we need to get alongside people. I went out for, with a, a, for a walk recently uh, in the, the sort of woods, and uh, I was with a guy who's only recently come back to, to being with Jesus. And so I got alongside him and I was talking to him. And as I was walking on, suddenly I thought of something. And I said to him, Do you know what? He, he, he was just saying to me, he was finding it hard um, having come back to Jesus to really get going and do the things that he used to do. And I, I said to him, do you know what? Do you think the prodigal son, when he came back, do you, think he, do you think he knew the father's love more before or after he came back? And he said, after. And I said, look, you've come back. You know the father's love. Walk in the father's love again. Start moving forward. And encouraged him and helped him to start moving forward. It's really important that we are listening to the Holy Spirit as to what we might pray or talk or share with someone. Also, we need to be very active in our listening because we're talking to someone and they're telling us things about their lives and their opportunities for prayer. We can share with them the love of God and we can stand with them in their particular problems. And we can ask God's presence to be with us as we pray with them can be all sorts of things. Encouragement is desperately needed. Thirdly, it says if we're going to be a people who speak hope, then we also need to realize about challenge. It says here, let us consider how we may spur one another on. It's not a word we use anymore, is it spur? 
spur one. It's a bit like a horse having spurs. And when the rider is riding it, he sees a fence and he knows the horse can jump the fence. He doesn't say, this is an impossible fence. He said, I know this horse can jump that fence. And so he spurs the horse and the horse jumps over. And what that person is doing is encouraging somebody to do something they know they already can. And then growth happens. So let me just say something that was a real blessing for me this morning in coming here. I looked at your band. Your band has grown. I don't know if you notice that. It is also an incredibly joyful sound, isn't it? It is. I was sharing, I was sharing with a guy today. Oh, we, we started a church plant. And when we started a church plant, I said this out loud. Oh, I can't believe I said it. If you're a musician of any sort, please turn up. And we're going to practice on Thursday if you play. And I thought, I wonder what I'll get. I've got two guitars, an accordion. I was like, accordion? And a banjo. I thought, oh man, that's not what I was looking for. I was looking for a lead guitarist, you know, I was looking for, I was looking for everything. Anyway, it was the most joy-filled sound. I went home thinking, well, thank you, Lord, for these musicians. And, and we led in the church, great joy. There was great dancing and everything at the church. I was thankful to God for what he'd given me. Overflowing with thanksgiving. So we need to spur one another on. We need to stir one another up with our encouragement. If you see somebody doing something really well, like we heard a testament this morning or we saw the band, we can practice here. Thank you for doing that. If, we, if someone's serving food out there, you know, and they brought food to, to share with us because that's what sort of church you are, we can say, thank you so much for your contribution. And that's how the family of God grows. If somebody's here as a visitor, you go to them. You don't leave them for somebody else because there may not be somebody else. Let the Holy Spirit prompt you to go and say to them, I'm so glad you're here today. I'm so glad you're, you, you, you're visiting us. Hey, can we get together for a coffee sometime? Love to get you know, you know you more. I mean, are there any coffee shops in Toronto? One or two. One or two. Listen, I spend my life eating and drinking with people because Jesus did it. Jesus did it. He got told up. They said, oh, he's, he's like, a, you know, he's, he's eating and drinking with all the tax collectors and sinners. For what? Where, where, do, where, do, where do people need Jesus? Right there. Right there. It says this, Barnabas went to Tarsus and to look for Saul, which was who would eventually become Paul. And it said they talked for a whole year. And then it says, um, and then it says, uh, uh, disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. And then it says, um, it was, oh yeah, so he went, to, he went to get Paul. Paul, when he became a Christian, no one really believed he was a Christian because he was putting Christians to death. So what does Barnabas do? He takes him by the hand and he leads him among the people. And he says, no, I'm vouching for this guy. He took a risk. Listen, if you're going to be encouraging with your words, if you're going to reach out to your friends, it's going to take a risk. It's going to take a risk. Sometimes you open your mouth and you speak to someone and you don't know how it's going to go. But I found God always turns up in those moments. If they don't particularly like what you said, they like the fact your heart was open to want to help them. There's something more communicated than words when we reach out to people. They know our hearts are for them. So as I said before, there wouldn't have been a Paul in the Bible if Barnabas hadn't got him and brought him to the apostles. And more than that, he took, took him to Antioch and Paul begins to speak. And what we find, what we find is this, that Paul, you, you start, actually, I wrote it in here somewhere, Paul and Barnabas somewhere. Uh, it, it comes Paul and Barnabas. It says, it says this in Acts 13, 42. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, people invited them to speak further. The notice there, Suddenly, Paul's in the front and Barnabas is in the back. It used to be Barnabas and Paul, now it's Paul and Barnabas. Listen, if, you, if you're an encourager, you love to see people go past you. You love to see people doing better than you're doing. I was pastoring a school in Oakville for 20 odd years. And my daughter, Katie, after I said I'm not going to be the pastor anymore, the following week, they employed my daughter, Katie. She was running alpha courses there. She was running... Uh, um, early morning prayer meetings at the school with about 60 kids at it. I mean, she was doing all this stuff. She was being far more fruitful than me. 
So, so of course, I, I was there for a lot longer, though. You know, I, I didn't. I, just, I was thrilled. Kids were coming to Christ. Parents were were coming along to. She started a school praise evening, and the parents come as well, and they love it. And it's a great opportunity to share Jesus with them. She's doing way better than me. And I can say that without any sort of, oh, she's doing better than me. You know, I'm, I'm thrilled. That is an encouraging person when you see people go past you. When you see people doing better than you. Next thing I've got here is speak love. We need to speak love. What are we stirring one another up in that Hebrews passage? Stirring one another up to love and good works. Stirring one another up to love. Speaking with love is so important that we speak words of love to people. I was speaking to a lady and she said, I'm struggling with my mum because my mum has got dementia and she says terrible things and it's just terrible. And, and she was just pouring out her heart in this difficult situation. And I just said to her, listen, you know, when people get older in their lives, they become like this. Don't think of her in that way now. Think of her in the time when she was your mum and you were younger. And honour that part of her life. Don't let this be the way you think of mum. And she said, oh, thank you. That's really helpful. What was I doing? I was trying to show love to her in a very difficult situation. Trying to help her get a new mindset rather than dreading being with her mum. Honouring her mum for all that went before. And that's what we need to do, stir people up to love and good works. I'm nearly there. Nearly there. This is what God's word says. It says, Ephesians 4, 29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth. How much? What, what percentage is that? Zero percent. Okay. But only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion so that it may give grace to those who hear. What percentage then? But only, it says. What was the percentage there? 100%. So what does it say? No corrupting talk. No dissing people. Sometimes I would even say we have to be careful, not even like funny, cynical, jokey things. Because some people say funny, cynical, jokey things and people get hurt. That should not be in there. But what do we do? We speak that which builds up. We speak that which encourages. And we speak that, it says, that gives grace to the hearer. In other words, it shows them the way out. It helps them to move forward. I feel God's word wants us to be a people. I think Barnabas was like that. He was a man full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. He knew what words to say for what occasions. Zero corrupting talk, but only that which builds up. Let me just challenge you. When you meet people, are you using only words that build up? Or do we need to put a bit of a care? See, I love humor. I love humor, but I'm very careful with humor because it can tear people down. It can, it, can, uh, it can become across as cynicism. So it's got to be words that build up, that fit the occasion and gives grace to the hearer. So this is the words we need to think before we speak to people. When we're reaching out to them, when we're reaching out to our neighbours, when we're reaching out. I mean, whenever there's an opportunity. My, my wife heard that the next door neighbours to us in England we, where we moved, they were going to christen their baby. So immediately she went out and bought the children's storybook Bible, which is a really good Bible, and, and gave them to us as a present. And a couple of days later, or a while later, she wasn't there, and I was, the guy was washing his car, and I went out to him, and I said to him, I, were you okay about us giving you a Bible? I don't know what sort of faith he's from. And he said to me, no, no, it's really good. We're taking, we're taking turns to read it to her. He says, like we're having a bit of a fight. Who's going to do it? <laughs> and, and so we just stood and chatted, but it, it gave me an opportunity to start to share with him about our love. Listen, let's be careful with our words. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? And is it kind? Let me say that again. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? And is it kind? 
speak faith into the people that we meet. Let me just finish this. And uh, I've got my list down here. I want to pray through. Okay, so speak hope to people that you meet. Speak with action. Let your actions display your faith in Jesus. Speak challenge. In other words, hey, come on. Why don't you come with me? Come, come to the Alpha with me. Speak challenge. Why don't you come along on a Sunday with me to the church? They're a great group of people. Speak challenge. Love them with your words. Love them with your words. My, when, they, when they think about you, they them, these people are full of love. Have faith in them. All right? Speak words that build them up. That's what it means. Build confidence. And speak words like Jesus. Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. Just last story I've got written down here. I, I was talking to a lady and she came on an alpha course and she came on the alpha course. And at the end, she said, I'm really going to miss coming on Thursday nights to the alpha course. I've enjoyed it. I'm really going to miss it. And inside my mind, I think it was God. Inside my mind, I heard invite her to do the cooking for the next alpha course. And yet sometimes you can find that the person who does the cooking doesn't want somebody who's not able to do that. They can be quite, listen, people, in, ladies in the kitchen can be quite ferocious. I don't know if you've noticed that, but they, it's their territory. They don't want anybody in it. But I felt, ask her to do the cooking for the next thing. And I, I had this wrestling going on. I'm going to get myself in trouble with the ladies in the kitchen. But I, stopped, I said, hey, listen, why don't you come and help with the cooking? Big underlining of the word help, all right? Not lead, but help. Anyway, she said, oh, I don't have to do that. Okay, now I didn't see her for a while and I met her. She'd been on her fourth alpha. And she said to me, just what you know, I came to Jesus recently. I said, oh, it's brilliant. And she said, I want you to know that I'm going to spend the rest of my life making food where people could sit, enjoy and hear about Jesus. I thought, wow, what a transformation in her life. She came to an alpha and now she's serving in her gift. That's what Jesus does as we encourage her a lot. Let's pray. Okay, can I ask you to stand? And if you want to lift your hands, you can. And if you, you don't, I understand that. But if just lift your hands if you can. I just want to pray prophetically over you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Lord make you one of his people full of encouragement. The Lord open your lips to speak encouragement to others. The Lord work in your heart so that you may see those who need encouragement and help from God. The Lord give you boldness to speak words that build people up and strengthen them and lead them to Christ. The Lord anoint your eyes to see those in your world who need God's presence and help. The Lord give you words to fulfill whereby somebody is going to be reached because you had a heart for them. The Lord do it in you. The Lord take away your fear of speaking to those who are lost but replace it with the joy of you knowing Jesus and carrying a testimony. The Lord put people in your way this week that he wants to reach and use you to touch their lives. The Lord caused this church to overflow with encouragement. The Lord cause this church to overflow with a great sense of family, the family of God. 
the Lord calls those from the nations of the world to continue to come and find hope and help in this church. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm just going to read something that Andrew put on a slide. Okay, can we read this together? Can we read it? When we operate our lives with a spirit of encouragement, we become more fruitful everywhere we go. Can we say it, can we say it again with faith? Now I know what we're saying. Can we do that? Let's apply faith to it. When we operate our lives with a spirit of encouragement, we become more fruitful everywhere we go. Lord, we pray, let that be our heart as we go out today. I pray that we really will overflow this week with encouragement to those who know you, to those who are seeking you, and to those who don't know you. May we be good to be with this week. Lord, we pray that we would check our encouragement level and we would check our words this week and that we would build people up in Jesus' name. Amen.